Hi, I'm Annette. And I'm Nate. And this is CrossFit Broken Chains. My faith walk began as early as I can remember it. When I was a kid, the relationship with sin was, if you're good, God is glad. If you're bad, he's mad. Very much like hers, I grew up in the church. Whenever the church was open, we were there. And there was sort of a, an expectation, it seemed, that perfection was required. Nate and I met in high school at Oviedo High School, dated for a little while in high school, remained friends through college, and then got married post-college. I joined the Navy when I got out of, the, out of uh, college, and on my way home, I pulled out the phone book and started calling everybody that I could and had a phone number for. Well, I had her grandmother's phone number, so I called up Granny, and uh, as soon as I hit the ground back home, had a friend who was getting married back here in Orlando, and. Um, she came to be my date for that, and that's when the sparks flew again. And Grandma still takes credit for this marriage. Yeah. Because that phone call. <laughs> As she should. <laughs> we came to Nona because our church was closed for a very long time during the pandemic, and I said, let's start looking for another church. Let's look for a church that is um, diverse. And so we looked around online and when we landed on Nona Church I saw that there were messages posted and so we started listening to one of the messages and about five minutes in I said that's our new pastor and that was it. <laughs> yeah. We were both feeling kind of isolated at the time. We needed teaching. We needed some some of that and uh, even socially distance at Nona we were uh, we found home and we knew it the first time we came. I, uh, I was a diver in the Navy, so I was always really active and um, into uh, kind of unorthodox fitness. So when I discovered CrossFit and I found out that like, hey, there's a better methodology for this stuff, it was like, whoa, like this is really incredible. After having been in the Navy and doing CrossFit style workouts, but not knowing that he was doing CrossFit style workouts, he joined a gym here in Orlando, one of the first ones in Orlando. And after about six years of that, decided he wanted to open his own box. So we looked for space and, and found this place and took a huge leap of faith, yeah. hoping that when that bay door opened, clients would walk in. We knew that CrossFit broken chains. We knew that the gym that we wanted to open would be our mission field, um, a way for us to reach people and teach them about Christ, show them the love of Christ. So we, we thought a lot about the name and did not want to call it CrossFit Jesus because we didn't want to run people off before they even showed up. But broken chains came into play because of the freedom that he and I found much later in life, that freedom from religion and the beauty of a relationship with God. And so, broken chains fit. There's physical freedom that's available through constantly varied functional movements performed at high intensity, paired with what you ate for dinner last night. And then there is spiritual freedom, as we know, uh, in a relationship with Christ and that this is our method of sharing that love with people. When people come into the gym for the first or second time and they say to us, it just feels different here. My gym didn't feel like this. That makes us happy because we want to be different. We don't just want to be another gym. And we always say that we're doing life together. So someone has a baby, somebody gets married, we're there. Someone gets sick, someone needs something. We're just, it's just this, it's this community that we've wanted to develop and we hoped and prayed that it was developing. And then we had to close during the pandemic and watching that community on Facebook reach out and help each other brought me to tears so many times. I was like, it's working, it's yeah. working. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a close-knit culture here. We've been able to take care of people when uh, things have broken down in their lives, they lose a job or a relationship fails on them or something like that. That's part of the culture of this. It's not in your face, but you see it and you hear it and things are different and marriages are healthy and people talk about things and we pray about things. Those are the transformational things to me when people take that step, because we, we hope that we're planting seeds all the time, but when you see someone take that step for their life and that relationship with Christ, that's, that's huge. Yeah, if you ever really want to get to know somebody, like 
sweat alongside them for a half an hour. Feel you know, like you're going to pass out for 30 it, it minutes. Change, it changes things, you know, the walls come down. Sometimes life is hard, <laughs> you know, we all go through trials and tribulations and things. Your training should kind of mimic that, you know, if you get a daily dose of hardship here, it makes the rest of the day easier. <laughs> so it's kind of a, it's a cool thing to do to be able to come to a place where you can be ministered to, you can be around other believers, you can go through an experience together every day and leave better than you came. We've had a lot of hardships at the gym. We've had a lot of really great things happen at the gym. I never thought that he wasn't there though. I always am holding on to the fact that I know that he is perfecting my steps and whatever he has for me in the future is what is meant for me and he's always with me.